Hej, roligt att ni är här. Medan vi väntar på att vi ska möblera om här så kanske jag ska berätta att jag ska prata helt kort med Gideon Levi som ni möjligen känner till. Han är israelisk journalist och författare. Han har tagit emot Palmepriset för, som jag citerar, sin modiga och oförtröttliga kamp mot våld och ockupation. Och vi ska försöka reda ut några basic facts om situationen i Palestina, Israel. Och förhoppningsvis ska vi kunna göra detta via en länk. Där har vi Gideon. Hello. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Good to hear you. Can you see me? Oh, yes. I see you very well. I hear you very well. I hope you see me and hear yes. me as well. Yes, you are. Oh, how nice. I well, love Sweden. I love Sweden, as you know. And it's always a great pleasure for me to talk to Swedes. Oh, I hope we will see you soon in person. Yes. Well, yes. thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for that. I would like to start our conversation by asking you to give us an update, so to say, on the situation in Israel-Palestine. What is going on? Uh, I wish I could tell you that something is going on. The problem is that nothing is going on. Uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is off the table. The world lost interest. Israel never had too much interest. The Palestinians are quite divided and weak and lacking leadership. We are in a very bad moment in the history of this conflict. Nobody has any idea how to continue from here. Nobody bothers to, to solve it right now. And, uh, and th th those are very bad news. Mm. Uh, the other day, Mahmoud Abbas uh, spoke before the United Nations General Assembly, and he said, I quote, Israel is not a partner for peace. It's working to destroy the two-state solution, end quote. Do you agree? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, it's not easy to say, but not only Israel is working to uh, prevent the two-state solution. I think the two-state solution is dead by now already, with over 700,000 settlers in the West Bank. I don't see any chance for the two-state solution. And I think Europe and the United States and the Arab world and the Palestinians should realize it and try to think about alternative solutions, because the two-state solution right now is just a lip service and those who use it, like the EU, know deep in their heart that this train left already the station and will never be back. But if I listen to the Swedish government and to other governments in Europe and in the United States, uh, they stick on to the two-state solution. Why? It should be obvious that there are no future for the two-state solution. First of all, because this is the traditional solution, and for a while it was the most just solution. You know, two peoples struggle over one piece of land, let's divide the land and have both of them self-determination, freedom, prosper state. The only problem is that Israel had uh, had uh, sabotaged this solution with the settlement for Europe and for others. It's very comfortable to continue to speak about the two-state solution, because this means that the occupation is not permanent, but temporary. This means that we have a solution, we just have to take it from the shelf and implement it, not now, but one day. This is wonderful for all those who don't want to send their hands into the fire. Mm. But this leads us also to a very false conclusion, because the, the assumption that the occupation is temporary should be taken off the table. The occupation is there to stay. And if it is there to stay, as I believe, as is proven day after day, so we have to stop uh, 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 thinking about Israel as a democracy. You cannot be a democracy with this tyranny in your backyard. 
When I think about the two-state solution, what strikes me is that it's based on the assumption that uh, different groups of people, different religious groups, have a right to a slice of the earth. It's, 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 it's a very strange thought. It's, is there, has there really been any good reason for the two-state solution ever? Isn't it just a racist or apartheid? Look, uh, this I wouldn't say because nationalism is still quite strong, including in your country. You face also questions of identity vis-a-vis mm. -vis the immigrants. And uh, you can't say that Sweden doesn't consider nationality or, or nation aspirations or nations, national sentiments as legitimate ones. Mm. It is the nature of people that they like to live in nation states, but they have. But this is impossible when you face another people who shares the same land, who is longer on this land than the Jews, who is much more attached to this land, or at least as attached as Jews are. And then the logical solution was to divide the land. But as I said before, this solution is dead. I'm not sure it was ever born because I'm not sure that Israel had never the intention to go for the two-state solution. Because if Israel would have really liked to go for the two-state solution, it would have never built one house in the settlement. Mm. Has the two-state solution always been a kind of a, a, of a cover-up for the real goals of different Israeli governments? Unfortunately, yes. It was a cover-up for maintaining the occupation and making it irreversible. Mm. And the EU and the United States and part of the Arab world and even the PA, the Palestinian Authority, collaborated with it because it was convenient for everyone to close his eyes, not to see and not to hear and meanwhile, Israel took the opportunity and sent 700,000 settlers there until it's becoming irreversible. Mm. But there's a strange thing about the two-state solution. I, I, I can understand why the Israeli government is putting that forward as a kind of, of uh, protection against difficult questions. But Mahmoud Abbas seemed to believe in the two-state solution. He's arguing for it. Why? Because if uh, it's not about the two-state solution, the PA should be dismantled. Mm. What is the PA if not a kind of a contemporary government for days to come to create a state? But once there is no chance for a Palestinian state, this whole apparatus of PA becomes irrelevant. And so is the PA. Unfortunately, the Palestinian Authority became totally irrelevant Hamas took over Gaza in the West Bank. Abbas is very unpopular. And we are facing a very sad situation in which the Palestinians are so divided and without any leadership. Yes. But the problem is that if I ask the Swedish government, why are you talking about the two-state solution, a solution that nobody believes in, and a solution that you, Mr. Prime Minister, or Mrs. Prime Minister, should understand it's impossible i would get the answer well we stand behind mahmoud abbas and the palestinians and they argue for the two-state solution because it's as i said more comfortable not to break the rules to continue with this old bad song of the two-state solution mm. uh, i met one of your former foreign ministers one you can imagine who, who was really very progressive. And even she, when I tried to ask her the same question, I can't say that she admitted that I'm right, but I, I, I didn't hear much resistance when I told her, Margot, you know that the two-state solution is dead. There's no chance for it. So why do you continue with this bluff? The occupation is growing and strengthening. But, you know, in a way, you can't expect the Europeans go before the Palestinians and before the Americans and before the Israelis. 
Mm. And uh, the role is finally to make it very clear to Israel in deeds, not in words. In words, we had enough condemnations and everything. To make it clear in deeds that apartheid is unacceptable, like Europe knew to make it clear to the first apartheid state. But here, Europe is totally paralyzed. Mm. Uh, you, I think you mentioned it uh, just a moment ago about Zionism and democracy. Uh, there has been some uh, you, you can try to, to defend Zionists by saying that there are different kinds of Zionists. There, are, there is a political Zionism and there is a cultural Zionism. Your opinion, is it possible to... Can Zionism and democracy in any way ex coexist? Unfortunately, not anymore. Look, okay. Zionism, Zionism had a role in creating a national house for the Jews after the Holocaust, when my father was uh, on his way on an illegal boat from Europe to Palestine half a year in the Mediterranean. He was not a Zionist, but he had no other place to go but mm. to Palestine. But those days are over, and Israel is a prosperous country and a very strong one. Zionism today means one thing, Jewish superiority in the state of Israel. Jewish superiority in a place where there are two peoples with two uh, aspirations for, for self-determination, this is anti-democracy. I mean, to, be, to believe in Jewish supremacy in the legal, educational, economical, you name it, any mm -hmm. sphere, to believe in Jewish supremacy in Israel means not have, means apartheid, and Jewish supremacy is Zionism. That's the real meaning of Zionism today. Then you would need another name for, say, Jewish international culture belonging to, to the Jewish people, and so if, if, if you can't use Zionism, what would you use instead? Do you use, what do you use? The same that you use in Sweden. Mm. We should speak about democracy, about equality, about uh, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of movement, like in any normal democracy. Mm. Is right. Sweden a Swedish country? No, it's a democracy. Right. And Israel shouldn't be a Jewish country, but a democracy. Mm. Right now, we have our eyes fixed on, on the Ukraine. But when I look to the Middle East, it seems that uh, the relationship between Israelis and Palestinians is deteriorating from bad to worse and even from worse to hopeless. Is it so? Is it hopeless? No, it's not hopeless, but right now it seems hopeless. I don't think that we should raise our hands because I guess it seemed hopeless in Soviet Russia and it seemed hopeless in South Africa mm. and it seemed hopeless about the, the Berlin Wall and finally those unexpected things were happening and, and things went to the good. Right now, no hope is around the corner because nobody really deals with it. It's off the table, as I say. But by this, we can't accept that the people of 5 million Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza is doomed to, to live forever under a dictatorship, and by the way, a very brutal and militant dictatorship. When I visited Jerusalem and, uh, and Palestine a couple of years ago, uh, I met with several members from different Jewish uh, peace organizations. Uh, what about them? What about the peace movement in Israel? Is it anything left of it? It is something left of, the, of it, but it is very small. And what is much more important, it has been delegitimized by the authorities, by the media, by the security establishment. There are many devoted Israelis who go to demonstrate, who go to help Palestinians, who do really unbelievable jobs. 
There are soldiers who get out of the army and tell everyone the truth in this organization called Breaking the Silence and many others. But by and large, Israel as a whole went to the far right and the peace came, became very marginal and not legitimate. Mm. When people uh, stop believing in, in peace, it can be understood as an act of desperation. Is it so that for many Israelis there is no hope of peace and if there is no hope of peace you can just hope to win the next war and the war after the next war? This is very depressing but I would like to suggest another term. Let's forget about peace and let's speak about justice. Let's speak about the international law and implementing the international law. Peace will come later. First, we have to achieve some kind of justice, not full justice, not total justice, but some kind of justice for the Palestinian people and above all, make Israel obey the international law. Mm. After this, things will be much easier to reach peace. But as long as Israel is violating the international law and ignoring the, mm. all the resolutions of the international community, how can you expect to, be, to have peace? I think we are both, in a way, talking about the so-called one-state solution. What could it look like? It should look like Sweden. Is it that possible? Be. Could it right look like Switzerland? No, for I, I prefer Sweden over Switzerland. <laughs> but it will be fine with me, even if it will look like Canada or, or Switzerland, as you mentioned, or other countries in which two people are sharing one state, right now it looks impossible. I don't want to give you the impression that it's around the corner. No, it's not. Mm. But if you know Palestinians and you know Israelis, if you put them in one room without all the prejudice, you will find so many things in common, much more in common than Israelis with Swedes. Mm. The only problem are the fear and the hatred. We have to neutralize them. It's a long way to go, but it is possible, especially when there is no other solution. Do you need someone like Mandela? We needed him a long time ago, <laughs> but uh, we shouldn't expect a Mandela because Mandela, I think, is a phenomenon of not only once in a lifetime, but once in a, in a century. We will not have a Mandela, and still we should get there. Mm. And how do you see the future for Israel, for island, Palestine? Are you an optimist or a pessimist? You could tell by now that I am a pessimist, but I must tell you that uh, once someone say that in our part of the world, someone has to be realistic enough to believe in miracles. Mm. And that's exactly the point where I stand. I am realistic enough to believe in miracles. I think that many things in history which seemed very unexpected and impossible became possible even in the recent decades. So what? I believe that by the end of the day, something will happen, but it must come from the international community. It will not come from Israel. This must be very clear. Yeah. The international community has to wake up. What do you expect from the international community and how could we as ordinary citizens help in any way? The same thing that the international community knew to do so well in such a perfect way versus South Africa, the same way should be implemented toward the second apartheid state, namely Israel. We have to stop talking about how bad or good is it, how many settlements and what will be the borders. We have to, we need a new discourse and mainly the international community has to move from talkings and condemnations to deeds. Mr. When this will happen, Israelis will wake up. But we need, this wake, we need this wake up call from you and for civil societies, not only governments. Yes. You live in a democracy and civil societies can influence governments even in Sweden. We could talk a long time about this, but our time is sadly to say up. 
I thank you very much for sharing your views and your time with us. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Levy.